Railway switches allow trains to change tracks and their smooth operation is crucial to keeping trains and passengers moving on time. From my time in railway maintenance, I know firsthand the importance of some of the smaller, lesser known components in keeping switches moving. In this video, I'll show you the pieces of railway equipment designed to move railway switches smoothly and efficiently. From the points operating equipment that drives the points to the rollers and slide chairs that support and ease the switch blade's movement along its length, I'll take you through the different components. Together, we'll go through the different types of each component, its advantages, along with common issues that you might come across. At the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of what it takes to ensure that a switch moves seamlessly every time. Whenever you have a mechanical system that involves movement that you want to be seamless and efficient, good and correct lubrication is key. Railway switches are no different, and this video's sponsor, Interflon, knows this. Whether it is the inside of the points operating equipment or the slide chairs and rollers that we're going to look at in this video, Interflon's products are the ones that you need. Their range of lubricants and other products allow you to clean off dirt, grime, and ineffective old lubrication, and then apply their clear, weather-resistant products. This allows for easy inspection and better performance compared with other railway lubricants. It's not just cleaners and lubricants. Interflon also have their leaf guard solution that solves the issue of railhead contamination, even that created from leaves on the line. So check out Interflon's website to discover how Metal Clean, Lube TF, Lube EP, Grease OG and their other products can help you increase performance, reduce failures and make your maintenance more efficient. So let's start with the points operating equipment, or POE. The POE is the system that physically moves the two switch rails, the movable sections of rail in a switch assembly, between their two positions. The POE is what connects the switches into the overall railway control system, allowing the signaller and signalling system to move the switches as part of the overall railway and train movements. At its core, POE serves three primary functions. Movement. It shifts the switch rails laterally to align with the desired route. This allows trains to transition smoothly between tracks. Locking. Once in position, the POE locks the switch rails securely, ensuring they remain stable as the train passes over them. Monitoring. Modern POE systems often include sensors or feedback mechanisms that confirm the switch rails are correctly positioned and locked in place. Traditionally, points were manually operated, or with simple mechanical systems such as wires and pulleys. However, advances have led to the adoption of hydraulic and electromechanical actuators, which have transformed how POE operates and integrates into the overall railway system. Not only has it increased reliability, but it has also meant that the location of signal boxes can now be much further away from the actual switch location, as it's no longer limited by the mechanical connection to the switches. Hydraulically based POE, or more properly electrohydraulic, such as a clamp lock or high drive system in the UK, uses pressurised fluids and rams to generate and translate force into the movement of the switches. Electric based POE, or again more properly electromechanical, uses motors to drive the points across to the desired position. Examples of this type include HW point machines and HPSS. It's also worth noting that on longer switches, what is known as a supplementary or back drives are used to help transfer the drive force of the POE along the whole length of the switch and ensure it's all fully locked into position. This may be in the form of a mechanical crank arrangement as shown in the picture on the left or an additional motor as shown in the picture on the right. There may also be supplementary detection as well to ensure that the full length of the switch is correctly contacting the switch. Stock rail. This is a good time to briefly look at what can go wrong, and the phrase you may have heard when standing on a platform wondering where your train is, the points failure. Whenever points do not move fully across, are not locked into position, or the monitoring system cannot detect this has happened, the points are said to have failed. This then stops trains from being allowed to pass over them for safety reasons. Obstructions between the switch and stock rail, or an issue with the POE, like a leaking hydraulic hose or the failure of a sensor, are common issues. This is when fault teams will then attend to ensure that all is correct, rectify any issues that they find, and then allow trains to begin running again. So, now we know what is generating the force to move the switches, let's look at what helps them move as easily as possible. The first of these components is the slide chair. What you need to remember about a switch is that it's made up of two separate rails, the switch rail and the stock rail. They are only connected at one end, at the rear or the heel of the switch, with what is known as heel or stress transfer blocks. So the switch, toe and the movable length is free to move and sit however it likes. 
For optimal and efficient movement of the switch, it needs to be supported at regular intervals, but as it has to move, regular rail base plates or chairs cannot be used. This is where the slide chairs come in. They secure the stock rail while allowing the switch to slide across a level surface that supports the switch blade. This ensures the switch rail contacts the stock rail correctly and can be locked in place by the PoE. But, as any engineer knows, when you want movement, especially between metal surfaces, you need lubrication. So therefore, a key part of slide chair and switch maintenance is keeping the slide chair surface clear of debris that might obstruct any movement of the switch and keeping it lubricated. Remember, our video sponsor, Interflon. There was a design of slide chair that attempted to address this issue. It included graphite lubricant inserts in the slide chair surface itself. Graphite is used as a lubricant because its structure consists of layers of carbon atoms held together by very weak van der Waals forces, allowing these layers to easily slide over each other when pressure is applied, creating a slippery effect that reduces friction between the surfaces. It also has some advantages in that it doesn't dry out or attract dust, but this type of slide chair seems to have lost out to the next design innovation, the roller. Before we jump onto rollers, I just wanted to say that if you're interested in railway engineering, then I have a free PDF guide that might interest you. Kant is one of the most fundamental rail design concepts and I cover it in depth in my free guide to Kant PDF. You can get your copy at the link in the top right corner now or the description below. Back to rollers. As the name suggests, these are small cylindrical rollers that support and facilitate the movement of the rail. Sets of rollers are normally installed next to the slide chairs at various points along the switch length, with always having one set at the toe, as shown in this photo. I've never seen the layout with rollers at every slide chair, have you? Let me know in the comments below. Compared to slide chairs, rollers actively reduce the friction and load through their design, lifting the rail and allowing it to roll over them compared to the switch having to force across a slide chair's flat surface. They also help reduce the load on the POE as the less force is required to push over the switch. Now, certain rollers are billed as lubricant free. Through the use of Teflon and other coatings, they are sold as not requiring any lubrication as part of standard maintenance. This may be true following installation, but after a time, with the grime and muck that appears on the railway, as as well as the lubrication coming off the slide chairs, they will inevitably need a clean and some lubrication. Seized rollers are a common cause of points failures. So, for a set of switches to move when the signaler or signaling system wants them to, this set of components needs to work together as a system. The PoE, through either hydraulic or mechanical force, moves the switch. It will probably be assisted by a back or supplementary drive to help the whole switch length move together. The switch rail moves across and is supported by the slide chairs with their lubricated surface to ease the movement. There may also be some rollers placed within the switch length to slightly lift the rail and ease its movement even more. Then, when the switch gets to the end of its travel, the PoE locks it in place and sensors advise the signalling system that the switch is where it should be. And that is how railway switches move efficiently and easily, some of them hundreds of times a day, to allow trains to get to different tracks and destinations. On screen now is another video I think you might be interested in. Don't forget to give this video a like, drop any questions in the comments section below, and please do hit that subscribe button.